Welcome to What's Up Poland. With us, our special guest, Monica Zielinski. Monica, just got a question for you. What would you normally expect to find in a milk capsule? Um, that's a good question. I don't know, milk? You'd think that, wouldn't you? But no. What these farmers and local folk found in Poland in their milk can buried underground would blow their minds, is the story. Welcome to What's Up Poland, the daily video show where we talk about news, views, culture, history, life, everything Poland. Yes, this is the remarkable story of yet another buried treasure in Poland. It does make me wonder whether I should give up journalism and start Seriously? to just dig with my buried. <laughs> uh, I do have some, I have a plot of land now, so I probably should give it a good once over. Do with you have a metal me. detector? I was going to say, get a metal detector. I'm Monica sure John, you don't need it. Pots brimming with Sustesi. If you're watching What's Up Poland, you know that the best metal detector is either a local priest, who knows? Or a dog. Uh, or uh, a man falling off a bike. If you're interested yes. in that story, then a man fell off a bike and discovered, a, I think it was 17th century treasure hoard. With oh, just one earlier than that, I think, as far as wow. I remember. Oh, yeah. He shoved it deep into the moss, or rather the fall from his bike shoved his hand deep into the moss. And when he pulled it out again, yep, Monica, your face says it all. Well, what? here we are. Here we are in the village of Ratajki in northwest Poland. And foresters are running amok with the latest information because um, there's a little house there in Ratajki. And they were doing some work out the front, digging quite deep, actually. But we won't go into what they were doing, because that could be a mystery within a mystery. And we don't want to go that far. And the people digging there actually found a milk churn, can, capsule thing. Canister, yeah. Canister. And ironically, uh, we talked about another milk, a ser series of milk cans, John, with the Warsaw Ghetto, because they were used to bury documents as part of the um, Oneg uh, Shabbat project. Um, and it, they were used again, this time, however, by someone on the other side of the, uh, the fight, because a German soldier fleeing from um, the, the vengeful hordes of uh, the Red Army uh, crossing over uh, the um, East German border. A German soldier actually decided in the horror of the battle to strip himself of his uniform, documentation, his swastika Nazi party ring, and dump it all in a milk can underground to make good his escape. Well, here's the story, guys. They dug the milk can up, and all of it is in pristine condition. His trousers yeah. are still ironed, and you could put them on. Wow. Yeah. He's not his... sure I'd want to do that, though. But yeah, okay, point taken. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if they're your size, John, but that's no comment on you. Um, <laughs> they, the, uh, he, he, he looked like he'd you know, he, he was out because he was a forester. So this is the amazing story of a remarkable chap um, called Tadeusz Lewandowski, who's this from the Kanyszewska Forest Division. No relation, I check, to the other Lewandowski, who's pretty dab with his discoveries as well. Uh, they were doing this work and they found this milk can and it's got everything. It's got a whole bunch of paperwork. It's got even, and here's some research within the research, a letter to the chap's daughter, which he obviously wasn't able to send, which is written in high German. So I think it's the, the kind of ancient German. So they haven't quite translated it yet, but they will do. And a whole bunch of other things, including documentation related to um, an Iron Cross second class uh, for delivering battle. And it turns out that all of this work is the, is the career story of a certain Gerhard Litke, who was born in March 1915 and was a lieutenant in the Wehrmacht. And Mr. Litke, actually, it's quite expensive. It's quite extraordinary, really. Uh, fought in Belgium, Holland. Uh, so throughout the Western Front in 4041, 39, 40, 41, uh, and then went to the Eastern Front. And it was there in July 1944 that he was wounded. So he came back to what was then East Prussia, the east of Germany, uh, which is now modern day Poland, and went back to his pre war uh, career of being a forester. So a gamekeeper type character. And there's even yeah. a map of the area he was looking after. But obviously with the Red Army coming in and, you know, really being dangerous times, uh, Litka decided to bury all of this stuff. And it's in pristine condition. His, his uniform jacket, again, you could put on. It looks like a bit dusty. It looks like it could do with a bit of a uh, beat. But nonetheless, it's in absolutely flawless condition. Now, according to Mr. Lewandowski, no relation to the footballing great, it, it, it's actually rather unique because, for example, the trousers um, are ones that you wouldn't normally find. There's all these personal documentation as well. And it's 76 years later in such good condition. So the mystery is, 
who was this Litka? What happened to him after the war? Did he survive? Did he make it out uh, alive? What happened to his family? And there's a couple of theories about what happened. Maybe, maybe he was deported. Uh, maybe the Red Army got to him somehow. Uh, maybe he made good his escape. No one really knows. But John, I think I have to say, based on all the other mysterious um, World War II stories that we've covered in What's Our Problem, I have a funny feeling that the internet is going to solve this one. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if some internet sleuths find out who this Lieutenant Litka actually was and uh, what happened to him uh, after the war. I mean, one thing, uh, looking through the article, and just to remind listeners that you can uh, check out the story by clicking on the link uh, below this video, uh, is the, you know, how everything is absolutely pristine. It's amazing to see these kind of like certificates, like especially um, the one where he's given the uh, the Iron Cross, right? Yes. And it's just, like, it looks absolutely incredible. And then all the maps and then the kind of, you know, leather um, leather satchels he has. Satchel, like, you know, with, yeah. pen with, with pencils still inside. I noticed that as well with little pencils. Um, with in... little pencils. And then you still have like, you know, the gun holster. I'm wondering like, you know, he probably took the gun, right? When, if he's, if he's running away then he probably just left everything but took the kind of pistol with him um so yeah it's really interesting to see or to find out perhaps uh what happened to this guy really cool really well cool. there's only one way to find that out which is to keep on checking uh this channel because don't you worry we'll be bringing you updates so we'll see you again for another episode of monica sorry monica this time sorry <laughs> i really got in there monica it's your turn now what's up poland